Hello, in this video we will be covering collections in the Swift programming language. The two main collections we'll be going over are the Swift arrays and Swift dictionaries. First, let's cover the basic syntax to initialize those two collections. So let's create a variable named names, and to create an array, we would use square brackets. An array can hold multiple data, can hold multiple amounts of data, so it could hold multiple strings. So we can say Jean Kate Alice. So now we have three names in our names array. And we can print our names array. And we get our output. And dictionaries are pretty similar, but they have two different values for each of the values in a similar format. So basically, there is a key and then there's a value assigned to that key. So instead of our names array, let's create a grades dictionary. And to create a dictionary, we also use square brackets. But after we have a name, we use a colon and let's say 97. So that indicates a grade. So this is the key and this is the value. And now let's do the same thing for the rest of the names. So we could say 95 and 96. And now we can print our grades dictionary. And this is, we get our output. So let's start learning these two collections with some examples. Our first example, we have to create a registration list that will hold strings. And this list is for keeping track of who has registered for a community charity event. So firstly, we have to create a variable, so var, and then it's called registration list. And we can set that equal to a array that will hold strings. So we could use square brackets and it should be empty after initialization. So this is an empty array. But since we want it to hold only strings, we can even directly put the type so we can write strings right next to our initialize um, of our name. And this indicates that this is a explicit string type. Next, your friend Sarah is the first to register for the event. Add her name to registration list using the append method. Print the, collect, print the contents of the collection. So to append or add to a existing array. So let's append Sarah to the list by first calling our list registration list and we do dot append and then we add the element we want to append so we want to add sarah now let's print our collection so we can do print registration list and see now in our list we have sarah now we have to add four additional names using the plus equals to operator. And all the names should be added in one step and then we print the collection. So to, to do this, it's pretty similar. We first set our registration list equal to plus equal. So this means we're adding to our registration list. And since it's a array or a list, we have to use, uh, use square brackets and let's add four additional names. So Sean, Mark, L Lucy, and James. So now, this will add these four or these four items in the array to our original registration list array. Let's print the contents and see. Great. Next, we have to use the insert method to add Charlie into the array as the second element. So to do that, we do registration list, and just like append, we do dot and then insert. So for this, we first have to identify the element we're inserting, so we're adding Charlie, and now it will be inserted at, um, so we have to make it a second element, and the indexes of an array start at zero. So this is zero, one, 
two, and three. So if you want to insert the second element, it should go right before mark. And to do that, we would use zero if it's the first one, and one to say if it's the second one, two if it's the third one, and so on. So we do insert at one. And now let's print our collection. Registration list. And it seems Charlie is added as the second element. So it seems somebody had a conflict and decided to transfer registration to someone else. So we have to use array subscripting to change the sixth element to Rebecca. So to do that, we would set the registration list and we have to access the sixth element. So um, the, since the indexes of an array start at zero, we would do the fifth element by using square brackets. So registration list, the um, fifth bracket is equal to, and now we're going to set it to Rebecca. Let's print our array. Let's see. Great, so it changed to Rebecca. Next, we have to use remove last on registration list. And then if correctly, this should remove Rebecca from the collection. Next, we store the result of remove last into a new constant deleted item and then print deleted item. So to do that, we would first create a new constant called deleted item. So let is used to create a constant. Let deleted item is equal to, now we have to call remove last on registration list. So registration list dot remove last. And so if this is done correctly, it should remove Rebecca and let's print our new constant deleted item. And it looks like, oh, so we did remove first, we would have to do remove last. And then if you print our last item, which is Rebecca, great. Let's continue. So now it seems we have activity challenge. So let's say we have a fitness tracking app that shows users a list of possible challenges grouped by activity type. So walking challenges, running challenges, and etc. A challenge could be as simple as walk three miles a day or as intense as run five times a week. Using arrays of type string, create a create at least two lists, one for walking challenges and one for running challenges. Each should have two challenges and should be initialized using an array literal. Feel free to create more activities for different, more lists for different activities. First, let's create a walking challenges array. So let's do var walking challenges is equal to um, walk five miles a day as example. And we could also do walk five miles, we could do walk 20 miles in a week. And now since each should have at least two challenges, that's complete. Let's do the same thing, but for running challenges. The var running challenges is equal to run one time a day and also do run seven times a week. Okay, so that seems to be good too. And next we need to Okay, so that's good. We have completed the first part. So in our app, we also want to show all of these lists on the same screen grouped into sections. Create a challenges array. So another array called challenges. That holds each of the lists you have created. It will be an array of arrays. Using challenges, print the first element in the second list. So essentially, we're creating a 2D array. To create an array of array, we would first initialize our challenges array, and in that we would put in our individual walking and running array. So walking array, comma, 
filing array. So this should include our both of our list or both of our arrays in one array. So here we can see that it works. And using challenges, we have to now print the first element of the second challenge list. To do that, we would do challenges and we have to print the first element in the second challenge list. So the second challenge list is at index one since it starts at zero. So index one, and then now we get the first element. So we go to index zero in the first element. Let's see, it's run one time a day. Let's go see. So this is our second challenge list. And the first element is run one time a day. All of the challenges will reset at the end of the month. Use the remove all to remove everything from challenges. Print challenges. To remove all, we would essentially just have to call challenges.remove all. And it removes all everything from challenges. Let's print challenges to confirm. See, now challenges is, is empty. Next, we have to create a new array of types string that will represent challenges a user has committed to instead of available challenges. It can be an empty array or have few items in it. So let's create a new type array of type string. So to do that, we'll do var and um, let's name it committed challenges. Committed challenges. Let's set that equal to, um, we can set it equal to one challenge. So let's set it equal to run one time a day. Let's even say run once in a day. Next, we have to write an if statement that will use is empty to check if there's anything in the array. If there is not, print a statement asking the user to commit to a challenge. Add an else if statement that will print challenge you have chosen is. If the array count is, exact, is exactly one, then add an else statement that, that will print you have chosen multiple challenges. To do this, let's create our first if statement if, and let's check if committed challenges is empty. So if committed challenges dot is empty, and I'll result a boolean true or false, then we would have to print please commit to a challenge. So we're asking the user to commit to a challenge. And else if to check the to check the size of an array, we would do committed challenges dot count. So if it is equal to one, then we can print challenge you have chosen is, and we can name this um, challenge you have chosen is chosen into a challenge. So to do that, we can do escape and then committed challenges dot zero so we get the first challenge challenge you have chosen is run once in a day okay so that seems good and we write an else statement so else we will print you have chosen multiple challenges And let's check our code. So we're writing an if statement to check if it is empty. And so if it is empty, then please commit to a challenge. Else if the, the count or number of challenges is equal to one, then we print the challenge you have chosen is in the challenge. Else we print you have chosen multiple challenges. Let's continue to our next exercise. It's a, so our next exercise is create a variable string int dictionary. That can be used to look up numbers of number of days in a particular month. Use a dictionary literal to initialize it with January, February, and March. January contains 31 days, February 28, and March 7. Okay, so to do this, we'll first 
create a variable, so var, and we will name our dictionary, um, I guess we'll name it months, or number of days in month, number of days in month. So then we'll set that equal to, um, so we can initial, um, we can specify the type, but the compiler should be able to infer it. So we can say string int, and we'll let that be equal to a dictionary. So we'll say January, which has 31 days, February, which has 28 days, which which has 31 days our dictionary so now we have to use the subscripting syntax to add april to a collection with a value of 30 and let's print our dictionary all we have to do is do number of days and We'll try to index or get April, and if it isn't there, it will add it. So April is equal to 30. Let's print our dictionary. And it seems April is added to our dictionary. It's a leap year, so we'll update the number of days in February to 29 using the update value method. To do that, we will do number of days in month, and then dot update value, and so we'll update it to 29, and our key would be February. Let's print our dictionary. And it looks like February is updated to 29. Use if let syntax to retrieve the number of days under January. If the value is there, print Jamie had 31 days, where 31 is the value retrieved from the dictionary. To do this, we would use if, and we would let the date equal number of days in months of January. And then, so if there is a date, then we would print January has, and then to escape, and we'll put the date days. So let's see, January has 31 days. So that's good. Given the following arrays, create a new string string dictionary shapes array so we'll create a new dictionary so var shapes array and should and should use the key shapes and colors array should use key colors okay print the resulting dictionary so it should be a new string string dictionary so we can initialize it with like that and then it should use the key shapes so um, so we would do, I believe shapes is the key, so shapes, and then the array is shapes array. We haven't defined shapes array yet, but I believe we would create one, so it's equal to shapes array, and then colors. equal to colors array. Okay, so we don't have shape arrays and color arrays. Let's create them. So var shapes array is equal to let's set it to an empty one.
things. Okay. Oh, so it should be, yeah. Array of strings. And we could do the same thing. Two colors array. Let's see if it goes away. Oh, cannot find type strings in scope. Oh, so we need string. And now we print the resulting dictionary. So we print. Um, oh, okay. So actually, in this case, we would have to create a shapes array and a colors array. So we would have to remove that. So given the following arrays, create a new string string dictionary. So this would be a string string dictionary. And they're wanting us to use the key shapes in colors or I should use the key colors. So let's create shapes. So, with an array literal. So, I believe we would also have to initialize it like that. And we would also need to have the empty array inside. Okay. So, now we print the last element of colors array, accessing it through the dictionary you created. So we would use an let if syntax or the force unwrap operator to unwrap what is returned from the dictionary before you can access the element of an array. So let's add a few elements to our list. So we could do squares, triangles. And here, let's just do blue. And pink. And now we will use a let if syntax to print the last element of the colors array. So do let's last element. So then from this we can access an element of the array. So let's do let if um let's do last element equals colors. Array, and we want to get the last element, so it's so we would do colors array and um colors, and let's inside colors. So this would give us this list, and we have to get the last element. So first index, and let's see how it goes. Now we're gonna print. The last element is last, last element. Okay, so let's see how it goes. So we expect the parent. Okay, so we have to do if let last element is equal to colors array colors of one then must be unwrapped or referred to member subscript. Okay. So it seems that rather than having, or rather than accessing the first element from here, we can actually access it when we have last element. So we can do the first element right there. So now we get the last element of colors array. So last element is pink. Let's go to our next exercise. In the previous app exercise, you bring code to help users with run pacing. You decide that you could use a dictionary to let users store different paces that they regularly run at or do interval training with. Create a dictionary paces of type string double and assign it to a dictionary little with easy, medium, and fast keys corresponding to values. Okay, and then these numbers must correspond to mile pace in minutes. Print the dictionary. So we do dictionary 
we do a dictionary of var paces and of type string double. And we assign it to a dictionary little literal with easy. So it will be 10 corresponding values of 10 and medium. So 8.0. Since this is a double, we have to do 8.0 and then fast. And then we can do 6.0. This is the mile pace in minutes. Let's print our dictionary. Okay. Let's add a new key variable to dictionary. The key should be sprint. So we could do paces sprint is equal to 4.0 and print the dictionary. So let's print pieces. And great, so now sprint is added. Imagine the user in question gets faster over time and decides to update his or her pacing on runs. Update the values of medium and fast to 7.5 and 5.8 respectively. Print the dictionary. So let's do paces of medium is equal to and paces of fast is equal to 5.8 into dictionary. So let's print our dictionary. And it seems I misspelled here. Great, so it, the medium and fast are both updated. Now imagine the user in question decides not to store sprint as one or his or her regular spaces, paces. Remove sprint from the dictionary and let's print it after. So to remove sprint, we would do paces dot paces brackets dot straight braces brackets sprint and we'll set it equal to nil so that essentially removes sprint if it is there and let's print paces and you can see that sprint is removed when the user chooses a pace you may want the app to print a statement stating that will keep him or her on pace imagine a user chooses medium accessing the value from the dictionary print the statement okay i'll keep you at a and we would put our paste there. Okay, so we let's print it. So print, and now we have to insert paste value here. So the user is choosing medium. So let's do an escape sequence in parentheses. Now we'll do paces, and we'll just access medium. Now let's see what it says. I'll keep you at optional 7.5. Okay, so we have to make this explicit so to fix the error we're getting it's essentially saying that there could be a value there or they couldn't so it's optional and to do that we'll have to specify a default value in cases where it's not there so since it has to be a double let's make it 0, 0.0 so it says okay i'll keep you at a 7.5 minute mile pace great thanks for watching and see you in our next session